Good evening everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing good. Um, today we are going to carry on with the third video concerning the American civilization for first and second and third year students as well. Um, so a quick review about what we have dealt with um, last time. So we have spoken about the reasons for immigration about economy and uh, religion or religious reasons such as the Puritans, the Catholics, the Quakers and of course the social life of that time uh, and the Civil War and the Cavaliers of 1642 um, etc. We have also spoken about the indentured servants. Uh, we have Given the definition of indentured servants, we have spoken about who are they, how did they um, get to America, uh, what was the process uh, to get there, and um, the contract between the uh, the uh, the sponsors and these uh, ordinary people. So today I'm going to carry on just to go a little bit deeper uh, concerning these uh, 13 colonies so we have spoken about the first settlements who went there first what did they do with their economy we have spoken let's say we have uh, brought up the um, the subject about the the north uh, and today we are going to go a little bit deeper concerning the 13 colonies so today we are going to speak about society and culture in the colonies in general so I'm, I'll try to cover up the most important ideas in order that to make it easier for you to grasp and to grasp important things, of course. And um, I suggest to um, make some extra research uh, in order to have a good background about the American civilization, about those who founded these, these, uh, this uh, great civilization as we know it today. All right, so I'm going to speak about the um, southern colonies in general and New England, which is the, the northern uh, colonies. Then we are going to speak about, about the middle colonies. And we are going to give some facts concerning these colonies, just in case you are asked to speak about them, to give some um, to give some, uh, I don't know, like... Uh, some information about them, I don't know, some um, important people uh, and uh, some works, important works about, <coughs> sorry, these colonies. Alright, so we start with society and culture in the colonies. We know that at the late of the 17th century, people came from other places rather than England and they accepted the English um, culture and they adapted to it as well. So we have people from Spain, like I said before, from uh, Ireland, from France, they all went to America and they adapted to the English culture. Why? Because these 13 colonies were mainly English, so they spoke the English language and they brought with them the English culture. So these foreigners, the, the French, the Spaniards, the Irish, uh, a lot of other people they adapted to the English culture in America so just a quick review about these colonies in the southern colonies we have Virginia Maryland North and South Carolina and even Georgia when we go to New England which is in the Northeast um, we have Massachusetts Maine and Rhode Island and in the middle colonies, which are very famous, uh, like Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York, and New Jersey. So we start speaking about the southern colonies. Well, they they had what we call the yeoman farmers. They were successful farmers, the high class of farmers, and um, they um, they depended mainly on agriculture because the South had good. Uh, low-laying, fertile lands, uh, they used that into their advantage. They used agriculture as the force of their economy, unlike those who settled in the north. 
it was not good agriculture there was not good agriculture there so they had to improvise they had to adapt to their environment and still they made a great economy which is still uh, standing till this day so the southern colonies uh, they depended on agriculture mainly for example Virginia they uh, depended on tobacco crop and cotton etc and uh, since they had rainy and warm climate flat and fertile land they exported these goods these produces you, know, you should notice um, the the difference between the word produce and product produce when it is related to agriculture and product when it is industrious when it is related to industry so southern colonies basically they worked on agriculture now we move to the northern colonies uh, which is quite um, a big chapter to study so I uh, suggest uh, to do some extra research about it which is very very interesting um, and uh, yeah so we just start speaking about these uh, colonies which are situated in the northeast uh, of America it is called the New England uh, and founded by the um, the pilgrims those the Puritans who fled England they went to Holland like I explained last time and from Holland they went to America in the ship which is called the Mayflower so New England had a cold and long winters and um, they had poor soil and they could not um, depend on agriculture they had lots of forests but they could not depend on agriculture so their soil was very bad and the climate did not help at all so with that being said um, they uh, developed a ship building industry in the beginning since they had forests they used that into their advantage and they took the or let's say they cut the the, the trees they used the, the wood or the timber or the lumber in order to uh, build ships and these ships they were either used to exploit the sea because they were coastal uh, colonies either to exploit the sea in general and to fish cod and whale or they exported these ships to Europe to England and European mainlands so um, it was a heavy populated area and also they built um, churches schools like Harvard like we know it today and um, that's about it for the social life and economy now we move to something to an important point which is called and of course related to uh, the North colonies and uh, New England in general this point is called self-reliance and self-governance what do you mean by self-reliance to rely on yourself so when we were speaking about the environment of New England it, it is a hard environment until this day Boston is a very uh, cold place to live in and uh, still people go there and they work hard and they gain money and uh, they, um, they're, they're still uh, working there they're, they're um, let's say the um, in the factories and uh, you know they are mainly related to industry so they relied on themselves they worked with what their environment gave them they improvised they adapted to their environment and the second point which is self-governance uh, they governed themselves they made their own laws they were not uh, working or abiding by the laws of the king which were who was in England sorry so we shall summarize all this it is what we call the Yankee spirit I'm sure that you know what do we mean by the Yankee the Yankee is a team a football team called the Yankee the Yankee spirit came from the pilgrims the pilgrims lived a hard life in England or Holland or elsewhere they were persecuted by almost every religion so they learned to rely on themselves so this is what this is the um, the origin of the Yankee spirit.
So this quality, this spirit, was shared by the Englanders, those who lived in New England, or they are called the Pilgrims or the Pilgrim Fathers, the same. So they were hard-working people, although the hard living conditions, you know, cold and rain and dense forests, no agriculture, but still they worked hard. They were hard-working people. So they had also what we call self-governance, like I said. They drafted, so among the uh, proofs that we have about the self-governance, this is quite important, they drafted a charter, you know, a charter called the Mayflower. Uh, this charter is a document called the Mayflower, uh, or uh, also called the Mayflower Compact. What do we mean by compact? Compact, basically, it is an agreement. It is an agreement um, between a group of people, so the pilgrims, they drafted this char this this charter. They wrote, or they um, yeah, they they wrote uh, down the laws, which would govern their society. So, to sum up, it consists in a group of laws, uh, or it consists of a group of laws that should be respected in order to protect each individual. So these laws were made to be respected, and in return. Each individual who respects these laws, he would be or they would be uh, protected. This is the first point. The second point about the Englanders or the New England, um, the strict religious rules. So uh, this is uh, basically a dark chapter concerning the American civilization. What do you mean by strict religious rules? They became um, extreme in terms of religion uh, we say that theocracy was or theocracy developed in Massachusetts and Massachusetts is situated in the north as well uh, so theocracy what do you mean by theocracy theocracy is to rule with religion uh, principles or religious principles it had a lot of bad consequences such as the solemn trials of witchcraft they used to burn people because they were suspected of um, dealing with uh, the devil or you know all those stuff so uh, in other words it affected all the lives of the families some people became afraid to settle in Massachusetts which brings me to uh, the third point which is dissatisfaction and the quest for um, freedom so dissatisfaction you're not satisfied about the situation in massachusetts you are afraid that one day you are going to be burnt alive just because some people suspected that you are dealing with um the devil so the um or citizens did not like the situation at all which is the absolutism of the puritans so which is ironic about it the puritans fled england because they were persecuted um uh, uh, by Catholics and they were persecuted by um, other religion either in Europe or Holland or anywhere so the um, the uh, these people did not like the situation at all so what did they do uh, they left the colonies and the first one to uh, flee the colony uh, of Massachusetts is called Roger Williams, who challenged the authority by questioning it in general. So he was questioning the authority of New England. He used to tell people that burning people alive is not a moral thing to do uh, without any concrete proof that these people are dealing with the devil himself. So we shouldn't burn them. So the authority got afraid and they banned him from Massachusetts. So he was um, he was obliged to leave the colony. So America was vast, big, and the um, this this man he founded his own colony, which is called today Rhode Island. And the religious freedom there was a religious freedom. Religion was not a problem, and even the Indians the indigenous they used to live there before the arrival of the 13 colonies they were accepted as well so, so there was peace in Rhode Island now we move to the middle colonies they were um, 
people by Quakers and the Quakers they are peaceful people they do not deal with wars etc they worship God only and they were peopled also by Germans as well they were uh, the middle colonies were prosperous agricultural and trading colonies the middle colonies were one of the best colonies at that time the um, they, uh, they, uh, they they were tolerant in terms of religion and they met they made peace with the Indians so when you have peace in uh, a colony you attract more settlers so when people from England they notice that there is uh, theocracy in Massachusetts uh, and uh, problems in Virginia for example they do not go to settle there but when they hear that in the middle colonies there is peace Indians are accepted Re almost all religions are accepted there is no war no struggle between the authority and the citizens they go and settle there so they attracted more settlers and when you attract more settlers you, you have a greater workforce so this is about the middle colonies and now in general um, the schooling and uh, culture flourish in the colonies this is an extra information about uh, how important was the um, teaching and church and religion uh, and school etc so we have Harvard in uh, Massachusetts University and Yale University in Connecticut and Princeton University in uh, New Jersey and Columbia University in New York uh, and then even the newspaper began to be circulated in the colonies so these are the positive aspects of these colonies in America which could not be found in England so these people started to live according to their own rules they started to rely on themselves they grew prosperous strong and which leads to um, the beginning of the war of independence which we are going to deal with the next video so I hope I made things clear this time I know it's a bit long this video and I promised you I won't do it like this but I had to finish with this chapter I have some exams so I had to um, improvise a little bit so as always if you need um, extra detail if you need um, more information feel free to message me I'm going to leave my personal email as always my Facebook link and um, I tell you see you in the next video peace